Hi, it's Maya here. Woo, it's Thursday night here in central New York. And I just have to talk to you because it's been, I just can't anymore. Guys, tomorrow's my birthday. <laughs> I don't know how you feel around your birthday, but I'm always like, okay, I got to take inventory. I need to get truthful with myself. And one of the things that I have been noticing, I totally gave myself permission for, and I've been seeing my clients give themselves permission to do this, and it is getting crazy amazing results. And so what, do, what, are, what am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about why you have to be selfish to serve. And it is so interesting. When I was getting online just now to do this video, I mentioned to my boyfriend what I was going to be doing. And he's like, ah, that word selfish, it does something to me, right? That's why I use it because it's a trigger word for all of us because we've got this social rule that you cannot be selfish, right? And then now, of course, there's all of this talk about self-care and self-love and self-esteem, but it's a little bit superficial, right? I'm kind of like gesturing like, yeah, it's not all the way deep right how are, how can you get deep with being selfish and what why what what good does that do so that's what i want to talk to you about tonight on this facebook live so i use the word selfish on purpose because it's a real trigger word for absolutely everybody but the antidote to that is serve right service now i don't know how much exposure you have to the life coaching world God, what are some of the other categories, some of the other worlds? Um, but there is a big social message today. I would go so far as to say it's like an imposition, like a rule that you are supposed to be of service in this lifetime. Now, I don't disagree with it. In fact, when I say that, I get all lit up inside and excited. But here's where the problem lies. People think that being of service means you have to sacrifice yourself. And I would say that the complete opposite is true. In order to be really and truly of service, you have to be so not self-absorbed on an ego level, not self-consumed, although there may be a time when you need to really work on yourself so it's all about you, figuring out you, doing a bunch of navel gazing, right? Writing in your journal, getting comfortable with yourself, figuring out who the true you is. So that's the positive part of getting selfish. But I want us to all really watch out for those little key words that are running around in society today that look harmless, like that you should be of service, right? Okay, I got excited again when I said it. But what that means is that I'm ready to be of service, okay? <laughs> because I have spent plenty of time being selfish, and I want to talk to you right now about what happens when you get really selfish and absorbed with yourself. And I'm not talking like your little ego self where you sit in a room and just kind of neurotically dwell on your own life story. I'm talking about self with a capital S that includes your soul and that starts to get really expansive and that's where things get really interesting. So when you start to get selfish, you start to get focused and you start to stay the course. Now, I have a family situation going on right now, and this family situation includes a family member who needs a lot of attention. Things are really hard for this family member right now. And I have a lot of really big, creative, work-related projects happening right now. If you have not heard me talk about it, I have a radio show. It's on every Friday, and well, it's on supposed to be on every other Friday, but they asked me to do an extra show tomorrow my birthday, so I'm doing an extra show. So I've got to put together this radio show, and if I got to, I mean, I want to. So I had to actually compartmentalize and ignore this family member. And let me tell you, there was some backlash for that. There was some backlash. Like it made, it looked like I didn't care. But here's the thing that's really interesting. I stayed my course. I got offered this extra radio show. I have this business opportunity to travel next week. Suddenly I'm having the inspiration and the energy to do a Facebook live every night around this time. I'm like, I got to talk to people about what I'm talking to people about during the day. It's like, really strong in me and I have the energy. Why? Because I'm being selfish. I'm ignoring this emergency, this fire over here, kind of going against my grain in the sense of my family training. And what happens when you stay your course? When you get focused on you, 
you start to get clear on what your soul mission is. More opportunities might arise, but what begins to shift is that what people think becomes less important to you. What people want from you becomes less important to you than what God wants from you than what your soul mission is. Now that is so huge because what it means is that you will not regret the thing that people who are dying regret. Um, I don't know, you've probably heard me say it before if you've listened to me at all. I'm constantly going on about what the top regrets of people who are dying is. In fact, next week on my radio show, I am interviewing a death and dying doula to talk about death and dying because the people who hit their deathbeds have regrets. And the number one regret is people wish they had had the courage to live a life that was true to them and not just up to other people's expectations. So how do we do that? You have to get selfish and focused and make your sole mission. And here's what's really interesting. Here's what's really interesting. I had a potential client last week reach out to me and she's like, I feel the need to talk and I don't know why. And then life got in the way and she canceled. And then it happened, I think, three times. And the third time I thought, okay, hold on a second. What's going on here? And I just got kind of like tuned in to what might be happening with her because I know she's a very busy woman. And I thought, I have the sense that your inner voice is trying to be heard, but you keep getting pulled off course by all of your external responsibilities as a wife, as a mother, as an entrepreneur, as a business partner, all of this stuff can pull off us off course. And I said, so I'd be really interested to see what happens if you show up for a phone call with me. And I said to her, I think that your inner voice might have been like, ah, uh, Maya will listen to me because that's what I do with my clients. I help you get connected to your inner voice so that you can, that voice gets louder than all the other voices. And that is a spiritual connection, okay? So what happens when you get like truly selfish? Again, not in an erotic, self-absorbed way, but truly self with a capital S, selfish, you start, to, you start to hear the voice of God or the voice of your soul or the universe starts to speak to you. Um, there were a couple of people I talked to this week. One was like, I keep getting these number combinations. And I was like, oh, I don't really get number combinations. And then I realized I had sent her a voice memo that had the exact number combination that she said she was constantly getting. I was like, goosebumps. Because she was getting connected to something bigger than herself, something on a soul level, all right? So that's what happens when you get selfish. You start getting more connected to your soul mission than to what other people want from you because what is the point of our lives? Yes, it's to serve, okay? I wanna say that, yeah, it's to serve, but there are different ways to serve. I had this private client. She came to me because she's like, I went to this like, I don't know if it was an energy healing or a massage or some kind of body work, and she walked out of it and she's like, I heard this voice saying you need to be a life coach, life coach. And she's like, I have no idea what a life coach does, but she and I are friends on Facebook. And so she contacted me and was like, what's a life coach do? And so I gave her some resources. I talked a little bit to her about stuff. And then a couple of years went by and she decided to work with me because that feeling of being called to being a life coach was really strong in her. And she also had some stuff in her own life that she wanted to take on. So we're working together and she was in a group I was doing as well as we were working privately together and she was like really in with the kind of like spiritual, navel gazing, soul searching, deep uh, coaching style that I do, right? For people who are really creative and spiritual rebels. Um, and she was like, if I had to do the kind of life coaching that you do, I, I would kill myself. <laughs> it was so funny. And but she's like, how do I reconcile that I feel like I got this intuitive call to be a life coach with what I see Maya doing, which I would hate to do. So we talked about she loves adventure and outdoor stuff. And I was like, there's a lot of life coaches, quote unquote, who do like outdoor adventure things. Some more time went by and she had another vision where she heard this voice saying to her, you need to help people and help people. Right. It's another term for you need to serve and so we were in a session together and she's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to like work at a soup kitchen or volunteer for my church. And I was like, okay, hold up a second. Because when you get a message, like she clearly got right. And then your brain kicks in, your mind is going to trip you up and you're going to look around 
And maybe you're being called to something that nobody else around you is doing. So you're looking for evidence that other people are doing it and nobody's doing it. So then you immediately are like, well, that's not possible. That's not doable. That is not true. So she and I in this session, the first thing she did was kind of go, I don't want to help people because I don't want to work in a soup kitchen. And at this point, I knew her pretty well. She's an action person. She loves adventure. She... Uh, she loves sex, right? She likes romance. She likes to be out there. She's a little bit in a totally positive way of a, like a good time girl, a player. Not, I don't know about a player, but like she likes to be out there having fun. And I had this sudden vision of her like jumping out of airplanes or something like a helicopter or an airplane. And I said to her, do you get that you could help people by having sex with them? And she goes, that sounds fucking awesome. And I was like, not for me, but for her, right? And then I said, what if you could be a life coach and help people by, by taking really rich people on adventure tours and maybe sometimes you have sex with them? And she was like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. <laughs> right and then she hit the next wall like but I'm a mom I have kids I don't know if that's something I could actually follow through on so that's something that is still being worked on but I wanted to share that with you because you do not have to be of service in a way that looks like Mother Teresa and here's the truth about Mother Teresa you can do some research on her Mother Teresa looks like the perfect sacrificial of service non-selfish person on the planet but she absolutely loved doing what she did and that's the key if you do not absolutely love now it's not always going to be easy but you're going to feel right about it so if you absolutely love what you're doing that's a sign that you're on the right track now i don't know if you ever saw the friends episode where um it's a lisa kudrow character how am i forgetting her name phoebe she did a good deed and um joey called her on it and was like well, you did it because you felt good doing it. She's like, no, I did it as a good deed. And he's like, no. And they had this bet that Phoebe could not do a good deed that didn't make her also feel good. Of course, she lost, right? But that's the point. When you are being selfish, you're tuning in. I really believe that God or the universe, whatever your spiritual belief system is, you are being spoken to through your desires and you get the message that something feels right or makes you feel fulfilled or happy, that's because you're supposed to be doing it. I have no desire to take clients on action adventures. I have no desire to, <laughs> to have sex with people to help them. <laughs> you know, like it's gonna be so specific to you. And so let's just, let's refresh here. What did we talk about? Being selfish means you might ignore the concerns of people in your immediate circle who have needs, like emergency needs, so that you stay focused and you stay the course. And what that does is it sends a very strong message to your subconscious that you mean business and you're gonna to listen to your inner voice. And slowly your inner voice will get louder then all of the needs of everybody around you and your soul mission will start becoming more important to you than the very basic earthly needs of the people around you. And you will also help other people because you're going to be lifting up everybody around you. Everybody around you who is stuck in problem solving mode, which was me my whole life until recently, will be like, first they'll be mad at you and then they'll be jealous and they might not talk to you for a while. And then they'll start going, huh, her life looks really interesting. She looks really satisfied over there. What's she doing differently than me? Like, what's she doing that I'm not doing? And it will be that you are paying attention to your inner voice and you're connected spiritually and you're working on your soul mission. And your soul mission will feel really good to you and it'll look different from everybody else's. I have not even paid attention to everybody who's here. Cheryl, happy birthday! You know, I saw that when I signed on just now. I was going to come send you a message. I might still. I cannot believe. We, I, I don't feel like I know, knew this really from last year that we were one day apart. Happy birthday. Hi, Patty. Hi, Meg. So here's the message. You need to be selfish in a really productive, soulful way in order to be of service. And this is how your life is going to unfold in a way that feels really fulfilling and good to you. And you're going to avoid the number one regret of people who are dying, which is they wish they'd had the courage to live a life that was true to them and not just up to other people's expectations. I mean, are you the star of your show? 
you should be. And listen, sometimes your sole mission is doing things like um, lighting on a Broadway show. Maybe you express yourself through doing amazing stage design or lighting, so it looks like you're not the star of the show, but you're the star of the lighting show behind the scenes. You, a Broadway show can't happen without sound and lighting, right? Um, so it might not look obviously like a, you don't have to be an extrovert and put yourself out there and do Facebook lives, or maybe that's what you do need to do. Um, so take time for yourself. Take time to listen to your inner voice. Take time to figure out what your desires are. And it's going to be scary and people are going to naysay you, but your sole mission is going to start becoming more important to you than what other people think. And you're meant to feel good. Now, if you're like, I don't know what my soul mission is. I'm too scared to do it on my own. We're not meant to go it alone. We're not meant. I constantly have a huge support system around me. So if you're feeling like I want to go for it, but like, I don't even know what that means. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what that means. Like I am worried about what people near me think. Or I, I had a client this week who's like, I have never done anything just for me before. Could that be you? Have you maybe, maybe you're a mom and uh, you know, maybe you've never done anything just for you before, but if your soul is saying like, I, I want that, let's talk. I have room. I opened up a few spots this week. I have room for two private clients. That's it this month, two private clients. That's it. So I don't know. Could that be you? This might be a moment for you to listen to. Am I feeling like I want to talk to Maya? Now I have these openings. I'm going to put my um, calendar link below. These are openings for a, th a free 30 minute convo. This is just like a breakthrough conversation where we get you more freedom immediately on the call. So you can figure out what you really desire and where your block is, right? So for my client, the big uh, question was like, I know that I'm supposed to be a life coach and help people, but God, the block is, I don't want to have to just be at a soup kitchen all the time, right? So we will get you a breakthrough on this call and you will see what the gateway is to your next level of freedom. So if you are feeling called to do that, I actually opened up spots over the weekend because tomorrow is my birthday and I am just feeling like this is crazy. If we are not living in a way that we know will lead us to a place of total fulfillment and soul mission, we're not actually being of service. We're lying to ourselves. We can sacrifice endlessly. We can give up our time, our energy. We can pass along our goodwill. And if it depletes us, it is not soul aligned. That's not true service. That's you depleting yourself. That's not true service. So that is why you have to be selfish to actually be a service. If I had not spent years being selfish, really looking at what is my soul mission? When do I need to sleep, <laughs> right? Like, do I wanna keep living in New York City or do I wanna live back to the country and have chickens? Well, that's the answer that I would not have this energy to do Facebook Lives. I would not have the energy to take on two new clients. I wouldn't, but I do, and I'm really excited and on fire for it, and that came from me being selfish. So if you are feeling like the time is now, which is what my birthday always does for me, is like, okay, inventory, where am I, where do I wanna go, what's the gap between where I am and where I wanna be, I can help you figure out what that gap is, what the desire is, and even how to bridge it. So if you are interested in that, and you're just feeling the call, sign up for a free breakthrough conversation with me. I have, again, spots for just two, just two private clients. So if you are interested in that, like hop in there, just hop in there and like do it for yourself, do it for the world. I don't know what your inspiration is gonna be. Do it so that you don't have any regrets. Do it so that you feel great and you can sleep better at night. Ah, all right. Hi everybody, bye everybody. <laughs> all right. I will see you soon, and um, I will see you soon. If you feel called, really, if there's any hesitation, but you're feeling the call to talk to me, just sign up for a conversation. It's free. It's 30 minutes. I would love to talk to you. All right. Good night for now.